This is the seventh video in my series on alternating current. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at phasers and how we describe them in a two-dimensional plane. You'll find this topic along with others in my course entitled Basic Fundamentals of AC Circuit Analysis. You can access this course and my other courses on my stand store at this web address. There are two common ways of describing a phaser. One is in something called polar notation. The other is called rectangular notation. In polar notation, the phaser is placed on a polar plane and the tail is at the origin of the polar plane. And as the phaser swings counterclockwise, it moves from 0 through to 90, through to 180, through to 270, then back to 0 again. The, the uh, phaser length denotes what is called the magnitude of the phaser. And the angle from the 0 degree mark is the angle of the phaser. So with these two dimensions, the magnitude and the angle, you can uniquely define any phaser in a two-dimensional plane. In this case, we have a polar plane. For example, this phaser would be designated as having a magnitude of 8.49 at an angle of 32 degrees. Standard orientation for phasor angles in AC circuits calculations define zero as being right horizontal, making 90 straight up, 180 to the left, 270 straight down. Please note that the phasor angle down can be uh, can have angles represented in polar form as a positive number in excess of 180 or negative numbers that are less than 180. For example, a phasor angle 270 straight down can also have an angle of minus 90. Here are some examples of phasers in polar notation. Uh, you'll notice the two ways of, of uh, designating a phaser either with plus or minus angles. I've left off the polar plane. We can assume that you know, we know that 0 degrees is to the right and 90 is up and 270 is down and 180 degrees is to the left. The vector on the upper right in this diagram is has a magnitude of 8.49 and it has an angle, a plus angle, of 45 degrees. The phasor in the right hand, upper right hand side of the diagram here has a magnitude of 8.06 and the angle can either be described as minus 29.74 degrees or it can be described as 330 degrees. 0.26 degrees. The phaser in the bottom left corner has a magnitude of 5.39 and its angle is 158 degrees, which puts it in up and over to the left. The phaser in the bottom right hand corner, you can designate that in one of two ways using polar notation. One is they both have the same magnitude, 7.81 but you can describe the angle as 230.19 degrees, or you can describe the angle as minus 129.81 degrees. In rectangular notation, the phasor is taken to be the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, described by the lengths of the adjacent and opposite sides. Rather than describing the phasor's length and direction by denoting magnitude and angle, 
it is described in terms of how far left or right and how far up or down it is from the origin. These two dimensional figures, horizontal and vertical, are symbolized by two numerical figures. In order to distinguish the horizontal and vertical dimensions from each other, the vertical is prefixed with a lowercase j. This lowercase letter does not represent a physical variable, but rather a mathematical operator used to distinguish the phaser's vertical component from its horizontal component. When placed in front of a vector, it'll swing that vector through 90 degrees in a counterclockwise direction. So in our example, we can consider the vector, uh, the red arrow, made up of two vectors, the sum of two vectors, one along the x-axis, which is a length of four, and one along the vertical axis, which is three. But in order to distinguish the, the horizontal and vertical, we use the J operator, the, which swings a what would be a real vector of 3 along the x-axis through 90 degrees to be along the y-axis. So the red vector is described as a sum of two vectors, one along the real axis, one along the y-axis, 4 plus j3. As I said, as a complete complex number, the horizontal and vertical quantities are written as the sum of two vectors. The horizontal component is referred to as the real component since that dimension is compatible with a normal scalar real number. The vertical component at 90 degrees to the real component is referred to as the imaginary component since that dimension lies in a different direction, totally alien to the scalar of a real number. Here are some examples of phasers in rectangular notation. Notice this time there is only one way to distinguish the phaser. They are uniquely described by the two figures. The one in the first quadrant, upper right hand side of the graph, is 4 plus j3, which means it's 4 along the real axis and 3 along the imaginary axis, as denoted by plus j in front of the 3. The one in the uh, left-hand side, upper left-hand side of the graph, is minus 4 plus j3. So minus 4 is along the real axis, but in the minus direction, 4, and the, th the 3 is along the plus j or imaginary axis, 3 in that direction, that vector is made up of minus 4 plus j3. And lastly, the one in the bottom right hand quadrant of the graph is made up of plus 4 minus j3. This video is part of my Electrical Technical Information Series. In this series, I'll be covering essential topics to help you understand electrical systems. Be sure and stay tuned, as I will also, from time to time, be reviewing electrical products that, in my opinion, are worthy of paying attention to. This address will give you access to the supplier of the aforementioned type products. It is also a connection to obtain a free copy of my 24-page three-phase transformer workbook, which will serve as a quick reference and reminder of technical calculations that you may need. This address, of course, is case-sensitive. I'll spell it out and make sure that you have it right. Everything up to the first number is lowercase. That is lowercase https colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly 
forward slash 3, then uppercase U, uppercase G, a lowercase j, uppercase b, uppercase i, and lowercase g. One of those amazing and versatile products is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra, which can be modified to suit any homeowner's needs, operating virtually silent, and when paired with the EcoFlow Smart Home Panel 2 is extremely versatile. The EcoFlow Home Panel 2 ties any and all of your standby power equipment together and will control them efficiently. It will even control your connection to the utility grid to make sure you're only using the least expensive power, switching to your standby power during those expensive time of use rates. In order to view the full range of EcoFlow's products and obtain a free copy of my three-phase transformer workbook, Check into this web address and simply provide your email address which will guide you to the, browse the full extent of their products. There is no cost or commitment for viewing and by providing your email address it will allow me to keep you posted on future videos, courses and EcoFlow products. Before I end this video I want to repeat the connection to obtain a free copy of my 24-page three-phase transformer workbook, which will serve as a quick reference when working on my courses and quizzes. It is also a handy reference and reminder of technical calculations required in your daily job requirements. Finally, here is the link to all of my electrical courses, which are located in my stand store.